start. Just kind of wanted to, to look at things. Cool. Um, all right, so it's here object. Oh, no. <laughs> this is like the actual worst. You wanted, you wanted the uh, hero object in our scene, right? Like right. In, in our space. Like yeah. Um, it doesn't. Uh, bless you. Strictly speaking, like I did ask for them in the space, but like as long as there's renders that like re like shows off the things pretty reasonably, um, I think that's pretty much fine. Um, all right, so I take it that your hero object is the uh, like sort of oven setup here. Yeah, oven stove. Gotcha. Um, I like the. I feel like the lighting is maybe too pinky, but I do I like. Sunset. I okay. Okay. I would totally yeah. yeah. Is it? Wait. Do you have? I feel like it, it feels very um, like beach sunset. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, it is over like a beach actually, <laughs> with the city in the background. Like gotcha. Um, yeah, contextually that makes a lot of sense. I do actually really like the coloring of this image. <laughs> like, it's very like the pinky and oranges are cool. It's just like not what I was expecting, but totally fine. Um, but yeah, so I think in terms of the oh, <laughs> amazing, <laughs> um, yeah, yo, I would love this kitchen. This would be amazing. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think in terms of the um, the the oven model itself, um, the first thing I noticed when I looked at uh, this render is like the the grates in here feel maybe a little weird. Yeah, I was like kind of going over it. I was like, maybe they're a little too yeah, so I think um, I think there's a few like there's a few things that are a little strange about them. Um, so for one, like these little nubs coming out in the front, mm -hmm. I feel like probably wouldn't be a thing. Um, and then the other thing, so normally um, normally these kind of grates will sit on like a little bump or something, like a little lip on the mm -hmm. inside of the oven, and you just sort of slide it back and forth on that. Uh -huh. um, so right now it looks like. It looks like they're not quite attached on the side, but it's also just sort of like pressure fit floating in the oven. Gotcha. Um, either way, so I'd go ahead and add a little bit more detail maybe on the inside of that oven. Okay. Um, uh, and it also seems like the, so I'm going to see if I can find like the inside of an oven. Uh, all right. so. Yeah, so the other thing is like usually, the, ooh, yo, that's a fancy oven. Yeah. Things I need in my life. Um, all right, but um, yeah, so like normally the grates on ovens tend to be. Like coiled? Not, I mean, well, not coiled per se, but less of a grid and more like a long diagonal. Um, so there's like definitely some cross bracers, but it is mostly, they kind of look like cookie cooling sheets actually. Uh -huh. um, and the other thing that I was thinking is. Uh, most times it seems like, and this is apparently just all pictures of the exact same oven, but um, a lot of times it will have like the rounded corners on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not, I'm, again, it depends on your reference. I don't know. I didn't see any of like open ovens. Um, yeah, I was trying to find like, <laughs> yeah. like, like just empty ovens on the inside. They all have food in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. um, if you have, I don't know if you live like in a dorm or wherever, but mm -hmm. um, there are usually like, Communal ovens floating around in Drexel dorms oh, that you could yeah. take pictures of. Um, if you if you need like extra reference for that, because yeah, the internet doesn't seem inherently helpful. Alternately, you could go on like an appliance website, mm -hmm. like Lowe's or something, and see if they have. I'm sure they sell like ovens and have pictures of the insides. Um, so that might be a halfway decent place to look for stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think, um, and there's also usually like some details with like screws and other stuff in here, um, and I think. I wouldn't necessarily, like, unless you plan on having this open in your renders, I wouldn't necessarily spend like a million and one years okay. going through and like doing Maybe a lot like, of detail. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was going to say fix anything that you'd be able to like see obviously through the glass. So like, I would definitely look at the, um, I would definitely look at the grate here and then maybe just like adding some little shelves here. Okay. Um, and then if you have time, I would do uh, some extra stuff. The other thing I actually just noticed. So um, right now it looks like there's just like a hole, like the, what am I trying to say? The square hole for the oven 
inside um, is like immediately attached with this door, like fitting perfectly on the inside. If that makes any sense at all. But like if you look at um, if you look at this, the door usually closes like over this area. Yeah, so there's um, so there'll be like a little gasket or something so that hot air isn't just like pouring into your kitchen. Yeah. Um, so that might be another thing to uh, to look into. But unless you open the oven, that honestly might not be super noticeable. Um, but that does seem to be the sort of running trend with the ovens. Um, but yeah, and I think um, the other thing. So where am I going? Uh, yes, I mean, you have, yes, there's like a bunch of different types of ovens that you were looking at here. Um, wow, these are like crazy tiny. Um, the, the thing that I was thinking is like, it seems like the knobs might have more detail, but I guess that like, again, kind of depends oh, look, yeah. entirely on the oven. Is this a render of? <laughs> I actually don't know, but it looks, looks pretty good though. I think it's, I think this is just a really sleek render. <laughs> um, Weird. Anyway, but um, but yeah, and then wow, too many things. Um, the only other thing that I can think of is like I kind of this feels like kind of maybe like some combination of like gas electric, but like tending more towards gas for the top. Yeah, yeah it's more gas. Gotcha. Um, so again, personally, I've never seen like this particular layout of prongs mm -hmm. on a gas stove. But if you find reference, then ignore me. Um, I'm usually just like, if you can back it up with reference, I don't care. I'm just saying, like, it seems a little bit weird um, how these are laid out. Like, maybe they were going, um, like you'd, uh, I don't know. There's, the shape of them feels a little bit strange mm -hmm. to me. Um, so it might be something to look at. Um, but I think overall, like, the, uh, the feel of the oven is pretty good, especially, like, it definitely holds up from, like, the front view. Um, but yes, I mean, I think uh, if that's your hero object, maybe just go in and like, add a little bit more detail and stuff here and there. Um, I also like the cabinet layout. I don't know why. It's cool. It's like a weird little counter here. Um, all right, so any other thoughts or questions from anyone else on this project? Cool. Anyone else want to look at their own project? Anyone? All right. Random selection. Um, anyone have any issues uh, doing, like, with any of the topology or anything like that on their objects that they want to look at? All right, cool. In that case, I'm just going to randomly choose a few people. So this week is probably going to be like a shortish. Uh, I was, I was going to do an open lab and then a few little lectures or whatever, because I was like, oh, we won't be here, so I should answer people's questions. And then I'm like, oh, we're totally going to be here next week. So what's going on? Um, eh? Ew. Cool. Yeah, I just have to wonder because it looks like maybe it's kind of finicky. It's just like, oh, render other objects in here. So gotcha. I like that. Fair. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the I like the uh, the lighting you have, um, and I think the anvil also looks nice. It looks like I assume that this is your main object, and yeah. you because it looks okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I mean, I think uh, as far as I can tell, like this looks pretty reasonable. Um, what have I done? What? The Weird. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, any. It seems like pretty much anywhere that's supposed to be hard on the anvil is, and anywhere that's supposed to be rounded. And it looks like you've also taken a lot of care to, like, you know, get these little um, metal nubs so the thing doesn't fall off the holder as you're hammering things on it. That'd be a crap day. But uh, yeah, and then did you? It looks like you might have uh, gone a little procedural with the texturing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Say what? Yeah. No procedural. Procedural is magical on so many levels. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I like I like the uh, the texturing, um, and it seems like the the model also holds up. It looks like you you took a lot of care to sort of go through and add um, like not clip stuff and like terminate it as if it were actual metal that was attached together. Um, also, I'm quite a fan of the lighting. Um, one thing I would say so is there is there a wall behind where the camera is? Gotcha. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was more like a um, like a sort of like open door garage or just like yeah. place with roof so you don't get rained on. Gotcha. This makes sense. 
Um, I think at some point it would be good to uh, maybe like do a little bit of work back in here to blend this out with the background better. Um, but that's, again, something that I'm not super concerned about this week. But yeah, this started to look pretty cool. I still like all the wood details. It looks neat. Um, anyone else have any thoughts or comments on this? All right. Cool. Anyone else want to look at their project? All right. I want you for the final. I'm actually going to make you guys talk. Um, <laughs> I will. I will legitimately bring in names written on pieces of paper and like select them if no one says things. Um, I mean, can you look at like my my file? Cause like I did a. Did yeah. A, like a, it was more like a more organic than uh, I've normally done. So right. Really Are you LRT? Yeah. Yes. Um. Yes. Let me. Oh. Right. The, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Are um, you? Yeah, I think the thing that you hit is when I saved it. Gotcha. Uh, I think I'm it's gonna. called. I don't think I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I, I, Yo. I, I've heard Facebook kind of like. That. No, so true story. When I, was doing, uh, when I was doing a project for CGI1, I was modeling a shoe. And I just saved different versions of it in the background, like you did here. And I just like shifted them. So I had like 50 shoes just floating in space. It's completely ridiculous. Um, all right, so I assume the one on on the head is the most yeah, up to date version. Like yeah. <laughs> no, I, I feel your pain. Um, all right, so yeah. So did you have any um, specific questions, or just kind of wanted feedback? Weird. Right. Do you have your displacement maps anywhere? Uh, I don't think I submitted them. Gotcha. Um, are these? I take it. Is this any of the? Uh, oh, there's just one there. Gotcha. And the ah. Okay. I was gonna just see, you know, if I could maybe figure out what was happening with the displacement maps from that. But um. Um, yeah. So without without the displacement stuff here, it's hard to look at that. Um. But I mean, it seems like the, I think the overall shape of the model does look pretty good. Is this just like a generic like online head model or something, or did you make uh, this? I made that too. Nice, looks good. Um, yeah, cool. Um, strictly speaking, there are other ways to do draws, but like this is totally just a head dummy, yeah. so it really doesn't matter at all. Um, I'm just nosy and I like organic modeling. All right. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think you did a, you did a good job capturing all the like little details of um, like the, the different cables and stuff. Uh, oh, okay, I see. I thought, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, this, they're clipping weird. Um, but yeah, and I mean, I think, like, again, I do, I am quite fond of the cable. Is this just, um, did you just, like, extrude this and then just, like, manually grab every other yeah, loop and extrude? Yeah. No, that is, yeah, I can see where you maybe, like, went in and did yeah. some. So there is, there is a thing you might be able to do that might sort of help fix this. Um, and this is actually, let me look at your curve. Um, ah. um, but yeah, so you can do a thing with your curves where, um, all right, just, uh, yeah, so it's probably like, I mean, it would, I would imagine it was like way denser right in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's actually, I think, more a function of how the control vertices were laid out. Um, so if you did, you know, just take your curve and go to curves um, and rebuild, uh, you should be able to rebuild this with uniform number of spans. I'm just going to say set this to like 40, 30, close enough. Um, so if I apply that, you'll see that when I click on this, there's now lots of very evenly spaced little uh, CVs on this curve. Um, so theoretically, once you go through and re throw in like a cruddy little circle here, um, a smaller cruddy circle. Um, so theoretically, if I were to go and extrude this now, um, as long as it's set to that path component, uh, cool. Um, but by rebuilding that curve, you get a 
what I assume is a much more evenly distributed. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Um, have you guys is Houdini a thing that you guys have learned already? Okay. You just. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I've never I've never touched Houdini. Um, one day. But uh. But yeah. So this is probably the easiest thing because basically what the um, what the heck what the extrude thing does is it says you can uh, the setting for uh, this setting here I think um, somewhere um, basically it lets you say hey any of control point like put an edge loop in my in my thing so by evening out those control points you even out the edge loops in the end um, which for all the good that does you now because you now have a <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what I'd recommend is just going through and like um, probably doing like more than 30, but you know anywhere like each edge you could shoot to have like yeah. a CV somewhere in there. But uh, yeah. Um, no, I mean I think shaping wise like that looks pretty nice. Um, and I think the hat also feels pretty reasonable. Um, I think the only thing I might suggest for that is uh, if there's a way. It doesn't really seem to be causing too much harm or anything. Um, but if there's a way to sort of go through and eliminate that star or like make it less than six edges, I would do that. Um, so I mean, the easiest way to do that, and this is going to get like real weird for a sec, um, is probably just to go in, I'm going to turn on symmetry, symmetry Z. All right, all right, so this might not be symmetrical, whatever. Um, so the easiest sketchy way to do that is probably just to multi-cut straight down your object, which is actually a horrible idea because you haven't circled down there. But uh, yeah, I was going to say, eh, I guess you could. You could, If you wanted to, you could just sort of um, grab this and just like multi-cut back on the head and just sort of trace it around. And that way you would have, I mean, end guns aside, but um, multi-cut this across like that. Uh, and that way you have uh, quads there instead of, and like one, uh, two little smaller tries instead of like one giant try, if that makes sense. Um, but again, it doesn't really seem to be affecting the shape too much, so I wouldn't worry all that much about it. Um, and is this um, low poly or high poly? Like where you're looking at right now, it's just smooth. Okay. High poly, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, because I was like, this totally looks like it was made to be smoothed. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I think the only other thing I might recommend for this is um, at some point going through and like, if not modeling, then like texturing in this little seam here, but also like adding uh, lenses here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they would look really cool modeled in and like actually made a glass texture. But I no. have, I could have the geometry on both sides. Are there three lenses? Yes. Oh, this makes me so happy. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> that kind of stuff is always fun. Um, I'm sorry, you were saying before I got excited by strings. Like, I, like there's two sides to the lens there. So like if, I, if it was glass, it would like. Oh, is that? Oh, OK. Gotcha, I think. But it's all one piece? Yeah, yeah. Weird. Oh, wait. I'm oh. not really sure. Wait, what, what am I clicking right now? Oh, I see. It looks like you've just sort of gone through and like added a plane behind it. Or no, because there's Connected. the heck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah. All right. So what I would probably do is just run through, um, close off this back part here, um, and then if you if you curve this a little bit, um, it would actually give you sort of nice like glass distortion. Right. Um, and then I think I would just go through and actually get rid of uh, this whole thing, uh, so that you would actually just have this separate glass piece like sitting in the frame of this mask, if that makes sense. Right. Um, yeah, because that's, I mean, it looks like there's like a little bit of like a ring here, which presumably the, the lens is somehow glued into. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think this looks pretty cool. And I like that you just have like a random head model for it. And I'm also like, just like looking at this, I'm just like, why? 
nothing to do with your model. But I'm just like, how is this effective as a ga I mean, I guess it's better than just breezing in straight glass, but this is by no means airproof or like airtight. <laughs> um, anywho, again, not judging your model, just like questioning designs of things from many years ago. Um, but yeah, so we're, I mean, apart from displacement stuff, was there any other like issues or questions you had with any of this? Uh, no, besides that core that you were Gotcha. Were you, um, for the displacement, what were you using for it? Like ZBrush or Mudbox? I was using ZBrush. Okay. It, like, totally was good. And then, it, I don't know, I saved it and opened it this morning and rendered differently than it did last night. That's, that's bizarre. Yeah. Was it you were on the same computer or different? I think I'm on the same computer, but. Honestly, that shouldn't make a difference, but that's very weird. Um, there's no chance you were, like, on a different version of the file like before you UV'd it or something, was it? No, I don't OK. Bizarre. Um, if you have your Maya files at any point, um, I can take a look at that and see right. what's happening. But yeah, that's pretty weird. Um, all right, cool. So anyone else have any questions, want to look at their projects? Cool. Uh, who are, I can't see you over the computers. Cool. <laughs> um, I'm AMS. Yes. So it's almost my initials. You know, like Okay. I guess for resubmit, I'll see that. I didn't cool. know that we have to. Gotcha. But, um, swords. Okay, so this is more of like a Maya file thing? Perfect, because I don't want to deal with Photoshop. <laughs> um, gotcha. No worries. Um, honestly, I'd probably have to stop my project for that anyway, so this guy? Sweet. Sweet. Hey, cool. All right, so. I might helix it. Honestly, I don't know. I might do. I might do. You could totally use NURBS for this. It just seems like kind of awkward. I would probably just manual start with a plane and either manually wrap it and then it just extrude it, or um, conceivably you could like start with a helix and sort of do that, where you just like reshape it to the blade path if that makes sense. Um, so I'm thinking. The, the most tedious thing, which like I'd probably do because I'm a spaz, is let me really quick uh, turn off the turn on interactive creation. Um, so like you could just go through and be like, I am going to just very aggressively and labor intensively just like grab this and sort of you know just go through and like wrap it around my sheath or whatever. Um, this is probably like wildly inefficient, obviously, to do, um, but you could do it. Um, I'm going to stop doing this. But um, you know, once you smooth it, it would kind of conform a little bit to the shape of whatever you were doing. This looks horrible. Um, and then you could just sort of take this whole mesh and uh, extrude it. Obviously, you would need more edge loops than this. But you know, you could do something like that. We just do it manually. But again, that probably is going to take forever. Um, so the other thing I was thinking is maybe you could go through and do something where you start with uh, where am I going? Start with the helix. Um, sort of do something sort of arbitrary like this. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just delete loosely the same thing as making threads, but like not quite. Um, but I'm just going to like pick a face on the, or like pick a selection of edges on the top of this and just delete everything else. So now, oh god, that I left so many loops in there. Um, but now basically you have, you know, something that wraps relatively nicely-ish around your sword, sort of. Um, so you could go through if you wanted to and then like go on the top view and just sort of resize a lot of this. So just like maybe go in with a soft drag kind of thing and be like, blah ha ha. Um, and do this better than I'm doing it now, but you get the point, hopefully. Um, and just sort of like smush it in so it sits better on the sword. 
It would totally be better if I did this without f like 50 edge loops going around this, because this is madness. Um, but once you have this, you could just take this awful shape that I've made and just sort of, uh, I, just, oh, I had soft drag on. Um, hang on. All right, turn off soft drag. So just like take your whole object. So this is what happens for the record if you extrude vertices, uh, which again, I'm not entirely sure what the practical purpose of this is. Um, but anywho, um, so grab your whole object and extrude it and just push it straight down. And then it would pretty much give you more or less like that sort of wrapped leather shape that you were looking for. Um, so that's probably the least convoluted way to do it would be to just start from a helix. Um, and then again, I would just you know make sure that you don't have 50 edge loops because that's going to be horrible to work with. But yeah, does that sort of help? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think of, so I can like, um, you made this one piece, which totally nothing wrong with that. It seems like it would have been maybe a little bit easier and like saved you some trouble to make it as multiple pieces. Um, like have the sword be a separate piece or whatever. But I mean, everything you did in terms of uh, like hardening this edge and then terminating the edge loops here looks pretty reasonable. Um, I might actually, it seems, so it seems like some of the stuff like in here is just like a little bit sort of wiggly. Um, so it might be, it might be good to go through and just sort of grab some of them and smooth them out like a tiny bit. I'm just seeing what happens if I, grr. So if I run an average vertices on that, um, it does go a pretty long way, I guess, to, to smoothing out that area. Still maybe like a little manual shaping done, but um, yeah, I mean, I think like overall this looks pretty good. I might just go through and like, again, just watch like if there's little like areas like this where it's kind of like wiggly or something like that, I might go through and try to fiddle with those a little bit. Um, but shape ways are like topology wise, I don't notice anything that's like super crazy broken. Um, this little guy is kind of weird. I assume you just you just need like a little like. Okay, yeah. Oh wait, wait. Were you trying to get rid of this? Nah. Um, so I mean, I actually, I actually kind of assume that that was like part of the detail in the sword uh, because you have all these other ones sort of over here. But um, if you don't want that, the easiest way to get rid of it is just grab these, uh, grab these verts and just squish them into the center. Squish them into the center like that. Wow. And just do a merge to center. It'll give you all quads. <laughs> Merge to center is my favorite thing. So when I was looking at this, I was like, you have you know pretty much like a row of quads on either side of this. So you just want to get rid of these edge loops in the center. Um, and you could go through like if you were so inclined and like be like, ah, I'm just going to multi-cut the line back in. But that's like so much effort. And I don't know. I'm a lazy person. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to grab this. And you could do it that way too. Um, I just think merging them is way easier. Um, but yeah. Um, cool. So, were there any other, any other like questions or issues you had with this, or? Um, nope, that was it. Just, like, cool. <laughs> cool. Um, nice and pointy up here. I like it. Um, it feels like maybe. I don't know. To be fair, it's swords are always weird. I'm mean, like, I'm just thinking like maybe this top could be like a tiny bit skinnier or like pointier, but I don't know if that actually really matters super a lot. It just makes it look a little sharper. But again, haven't looked at reference of this kind of sword. Kind of, is this like a claymore? What is this? Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I think topology wise, uh, everything looks pretty good. You did a good job um, terminating edge loops so like the round stuff stays round while the pointy stuff stays pointy. Um, yeah, cool. Um, any other thoughts, questions from anyone else on this? All right. Uh, anyone else want to look at their own projects? All right. I'll do maybe like one or two more random selections of projects and then wander on. Can you do the mine? Sure. Um, I made a turntable for mine, is that correct? Right? Works for me. 
Um, your GD, yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, I only had mine in my like, email. It was just separate. Okay. Know. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Um, all right, so am I going movies, I take it? Yeah. Please open. Yes, cool. Um, so strictly speaking, you guys will actually have to render a turntable for, dear God, give me a second. Um, somewhere in the next few weeks, um, the assignment is actually to render a, a turntable out. Um, OK. Um, but yeah, so did you have any specific issues or questions, or just kind of wanted to look? Cool. Um, so my first thought is the, the turntable itself is like a little bit fast. Um, How do you slow it down like, even a little bit? Say again? How would you slow it down like, even by a little bit? Um, so how did you render this? Um, I have, I... Um, I, rend I rendered it like through like DXR and I put it into uh, After Effects. Okay. But I made it MP4 that way. Gotcha. How many frames did you use? Okay, so that explains why it's really fast. Um, so normally a turntable will have, um, it'll be like 12 to 13 seconds long, and at 24 frames a second, that gives you something to the effect of like 720 frames or something like that. Um, so basically, th like the only reason that this is fast is um, because you basically have, if, if this is 24 frames a second at 120 frames, um, that comes down to like four seconds. Uh, so it, it is just a matter of, rendering more frames, basically. Um, you could also go into like After Effects and slow the speed down or something like that. Um, you reach a point where it gets kind of, uh, I think there's like, if you go lower than 12 frames a second, the human eye like notices the, the different frames uh, is the only thing. But I've shamelessly slowed my stuff down to like 14 frames a second before uh, if I like needed some extra length out of it. Um, but yes, I like I like that you put in the time on the on the clock. I don't know why. I just think that's really cute. Um, I think the the biggest thing that I notice is like it seems like the and it, it, I guess it's kind of like a combination of two things. So to me, I'm not used to and I could be wrong. Haven't looked at reference of microwaves in a while, but usually the door is flush with this little like control box thing on the side. In my experience. Um, again, if you have reference that shows a microwave that looks like this, I'll bite my tongue. Um, it's just like off the bat uh, that I noticed that. And then um, the other thing is the door seems a little bit like it's indented inward. Say again? Gotcha. Um, cool. All right, yeah, so I'm just like nice to see that on microwaves. But um, yeah, I mean, if that was intentional, then cool. Um, and then the other thing is it seems like it seems like the, the edges of this little box or like window are really soft uh, and more curvy than I'm used to seeing on microwaves. Um, that's not to say that I'm like the bevel feels fine, but like it feels like this area in here is still like kind of curved, if that makes sense. And like that feels a little weird to me. Um, apart from that, I mean, it's cool that you have stuff like textured already. Um, I'm not, so this is, this is minor and nitpicky, but um, if you're going to see, if you're not seeing the cable in the final, then like who the heck cares, I wouldn't worry about it. But um, the, usually I think microwaves are high enough power where they'll have that third little grounding plug, uh, like ground prong. Um, and it also looks like the uh, little silver tong things are sort of, at least this one, because this one looks fine as far as I can tell, but this one looks like it might be curving a little bit. Um, so maybe just like a few more edge loops to harden that area out. Um, and at some point it might also be cool to, I don't know if you're planning on, there's, there's an extra credit that's just like make screws, because <laughs> um, screws are great, but it looks like. Those are Okay, is that how they are on the actual microwave? Right. Uh, I'm curious now. He's a lot more holes in the oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, microwaves are intense with the like number of just random holes they have. 
Um, but yeah, so these are actual screws. Um, I would go through and just like uh, make a little generic screw to sort of replace all those little cylinders with. Um, which again is something that like if you're not going to see that in your final, I wouldn't necessarily spend like a whole lot of time on the back of the object. Um, I would focus more on the stuff that's actually move visible. If you can see the back, totally pay attention to it. Um, yeah, but if oh yeah, cards, I would card the crap out of that. <laughs> um, no, I, but like in all seriousness, I probably would just go into something like Photoshop and. Um, just like recreate this little grid texture with just a series of dots for opacity. Um, and then do you remember the, the bit we did a few weeks ago on cards? No. Okay. Um, basically, you take a flat plane and just put an opacity map on it uh, so that you would just be able to see through those little areas in the grate. Um, I think it's like fine enough detail where that would totally make sense. And usually this little plane is embedded in glass. Um, so you could just sort of like throw that on the inside and just like let it let it exist. Um, when you do that, are you using Arnold for this? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you do end up making cards, um, the opacity that you are looking for is uh, under the geometry tab. It's like right above, um, uh, right here. Uh, right above bump mapping, this is the opacity where you would map in like a, an alpha for a card. Um, if you put it in transmission weight, it's going to make it look like glass, which in this case is not what you want. Um, yeah. Um, cool. So I think that's mostly my thoughts on the, the microwave so far. Um, did you have any other questions or anything like that? Or? Uh, cool. Um, the other thing, so if you're, uh, I guess, follow up thought, um, if you're making that specific microwave uh, like this guy here, um, it might be try it might be nice to try to get the the door detail a little bit closer. So I mean, uh, this is like this is flat, but like these sides are totally rounded. So I'll bite my tongue on that. Um, but it might be nice to sort of go in and add like a few more edge loops to try to define um, these areas of like creases and stuff. Um, and then it does look like, as far as I can tell, the the door is flush with this little side piece here. But yeah, no, I mean, I think apart from that. Um, is definitely starting to to become a thing, and and be microwavy. Um, cool. All right. Um, anyone else uh, want to look at their project? All right. Cool. Uh, in that case.